being filmed on the chest cam. I need to film how, how normal you <laughs> This is how we have to... I need more back flexibility. This is Holly wearing her, her chest cam. Yeah, I need more back flexibility. Oh. This is Hull wearing her her chest yeah. cam. I need more back flexibility. That's not very good. You're never going to be a gymnast like that. Why? Go on, you need to do that and go back down onto your hands. I'm not going to be able to go onto my hands. Okay. Please don't fall over onto the concrete and smack your head. Well, we'll do it like this instead. Yeah. Beautiful hole. Okay, I take it back. You will be a gymnast one day. That's actually not too bad, is it? Can you get up now? Yeah. You see, I I would have no hope of getting up I from that position. I flat on the floor from here. Oh, ow! Oh, that's not normal. But then there's nothing about you that's normal. Oh, this cramp in my foot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna bring, ow, ow, sorry, this crump in my foot. Anyway, I'm gonna, the reason why I'm wearing chest cam is because I'm gonna make a little feeding vlog. Okay, but, oh, okay. And I need this bit of video for my intro, so you okay. can have it, please. Yeah, no, I'm gonna use it. What? But I'll let you have it as well. Oh, thanks. Bye. I'm gonna use it. Bye. I bruised my elbow. Oh, injuries in the workplace. Can you put it in the accident, accident report book? <laughs> Oh, it's because chest cam is it's floppy. She's got a floppy chest cam. <laughs> it's because your beams aren't there big enough. Alright, there's no need to diss my girls, yeah. Uh, it's because chest cam was a terrible investment. It's not as good as Jodie's chest cam. Jodie's chest is better at video than mine. Um, she's only got better chest got than bigger. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway. Are we ruining the, your video? The angles oh. are quite right to get it right. Instead it just it's like flat whereas i need one that's more like this but this one doesn't go like this it only goes like this so chest cam was a terrible investment and everything i've videoed on it so far has been terrible and it's just been a waste of time a waste of money and a waste of emotions getting angry at the chest cam but the rest of this video i will be showing you how we make some of the horses feeds and how we distribute them out into the wild with the savages but just not on chest cam because i was gr going oh yeah great i can be hands free but i can't be hands free because i have to hold one hand on the chest cam to make it go to the right angle what good is that well, could you just stand up straighter well, it's not like I do stuff. It's not like I walk around like a prehistoric <laughs> Like, oh yes, <laughs> absolutely ideal. <laughs> not. Thank you, Freya. All right, because chest cam was terrible, I've already made feeds. This isn't all of their feeds. It's just the ones remaining out in the field. First stop is, of course, these two, Albino and Uber. So when you're feeding more than one horse or a group, you always feed the most dominant one first, because obviously if, if you feed the one at the bottom, bottom of the pecking order first, the more dominant one is only gonna come and steal it. So, Uber, there you go. And then for Little Principal, you can have this one. Hello, Albi. Hey, gorgeous. I'm actually going to have to feed him quite far away from Obi. Well, a fair distance, just because. Uh, dropped it on the floor there, but that's fine. I'll hoover it up. 
just because with Obi, being the way he is, he's particularly protective of his feed. So even if I'd fed Prince about here, that would have been too close and Obi would have come for him and stolen his feed. So by feeding them this far apart, there's a nice healthy distance between them both. Unless it's going to be dry and fairly mild for the next few days, I think for the rest of the week I've taken the albino's turnout off so that he can just get rid of some of his coat. I'm not quite sure how woolly he is, but he does have a tendency to get rather woolly. He's not doing too bad for him actually, there have been years in the past when it came to casting season and you could literally pull clumps of loose hair out of his coat, so it'll just give him a chance to roll and get rid of some of it. And also, I, I, I always think it's just nicer when the sun does come out for them to feel it on their backs. Yes, so by tomorrow, well, actually within the next hour, he's going to be absolutely ranted because what's he going to go and do? He's going to go and roll in the mud. Next stop is, of course, the girls. So first up here, Yoda fish. as you just saw just popping through the fence line whereas in years gone by when we haven't had that we've had to go into the field so fight our way into the gate and then distribute them in the mud um, but yeah some days it goes really smoothly like today and then other days it'll maybe feed yodel and then Yolanda goes and steals Nikis just because she can and then it'll get a bit mixed up but it's only really the ones with supplements we have to worry about and what I'm going to do now actually, is while they're all eating, is I'm going to need to bring Doubtson out with her feed because hers is obviously bigger, so she'll take longer to eat than the others and Yolanda is only going to come and steal it, so I'm going to get Doubtson out into this little corral bit here, which is fairly good, she knows the score, you can see this is what this all that front part would look like if it wasn't for the stones. But it looks in this weather it soon dries out. Hello Yodel. Hey Dadson. Okay. Let's get you. Yes. Come on then. Round the back of everyone. So, so Dadson now is gonna follow me out. I'm like the Pied Piper. There she is. We'll get her out so that she can eat her food in peace. Ooh, down, down. Good girl. There we go. So Dalton definitely knows what she's doing. I'll drag it far away from the fence line because the others will try and steal it from there. So there we go. And then as soon as she's finished, I'll just pop her back in. So while they're eating those as well, I'm going to come to Annie. Hey Anne! And what I'm going to do is give her her special carrot with her equioxin. And I'm just going to watch her eat it to make sure she gets it all. Because sometimes we don't want them to spit out the tablet. Although it's normally Zhao that does that. And then she licks it off my hand. So I think, by the sounds of it, she's got it all, which is great. Got your Equiox sweet at? Fesh. Come here. Oi. I'm being ignored. Oi. It's actually so rude. Good girl. There we go. She's chewing that, so she's got it. 
Yeah, because I've noticed a couple of times I've given it to Xiao and she's actually managed to eat the carrot but spit out the tablet. But today, you seem to have got the hang of eating that. Well done, you. Well done. And you know, I know some of you might be thinking, well, they're quite close together when they are eating in here. And yeah, they are. Um, but with all of these, these girls, as long as they've got their own, they're not really fussed. They're quite unlikely to go attacking the other. I mean, if they were really, really close, but in this distance while they're eating, they're unlikely to kick off. It's only Obi that you need to feed a distance from. And to be fair, Hida, sometimes you need to feed him a bit further away. It's just the more possessive ones that you need to give more distance to. And then everyone's gonna come and watch darts and eat now because they're jealous. And while I'm down here, as it is milder, I'm just gonna take some of their necks off. So I've taken Xiao's off. And ordinarily when I feed anyway, I always adjust the rugs, the ones that have slipped or belly bands that have come loose. Um, good time to check on them all as well. So, but I'm not gonna take everybody's off. I mean, Annie's already off into the sunset over there. I'm gonna leave hers on because sometimes she can be itchy, which means she has a tendency to rub. And also it's not ridiculously warm that they're gonna be sweating up and uncomfortable under there. It's just nicer for them to feel a bit more sun on their skin and they'll be able to have a nice mutual groom at the base of their necks as well. Hey Yoda, should we get your neck off? Nika now, Spesh, Yodel, all with no necks on. So that's nice. That'll be nice for them. Charles belly straps. I don't know what they're doing. I need to go and sort those out. Look at that now. Bit of sisterly love. So as I said, as soon as they've got their necks off, just offers a bit more opportunity for a bit of mutual grooming with them. Which is always a really nice thing for them to do. As long as you promise not to chew each other's manes out, okay? Excellent. And I know this field does look quite poached and muddy at the moment, which isn't ideal, but it's done rather well considering it's had up to, it's gotta be maybe up to nine out here at a time. No, maybe more like seven. I don't know, but it's had a fair few of them. Um, and believe it or not, well, as soon as they come off this into their summer pasture, which is the barn field and a bit of dry weather and Tracy harrowing it, it doesn't take long to come right. So it doesn't at all. <laughs> now it's Dalton. I'll get her neck off too. Back in she comes. Come on, Delpy. Come on, darling. I mean, she's coming at a bit of a leisurely rate, but she's on her way. Dotson, go on, Ian, get in the house, go on, in the house, in the house, that's it, in the house. Amazing, and back in the house she goes. And you can see in the background, the two sisters still loving on each other. Oh, I need to take Dotson's neck off. There we go. So now everybody's loving on each other. 